Well, Lee, thank you so much uh, for uh, hopping on a video with me. I know you're a busy man and I want to get straight into it. So first things first is server actions. Uh, I'm not sure if you know how popular server actions are, but everyone is talking about them. And I sort of noticed people are using server actions in a way that maybe we're not supposed to use them. So before we get into those details, maybe in your own words, what are server actions? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to talking through this. So server actions, the easiest way that I've found to understand them is it takes care of setting up a bunch of code that you don't need to do to create an API. Somewhere you need to make a call to an API in your React code. And in a single page app style React app or in other types of apps, you have to manually set up that API endpoint yourself. Action does that's really nice. You get to call this API like you're calling a function in your React code, and you don't have to go do all the wiring to put these pieces together. So for those who have been coding for some time, there was a concept of a remote procedure call, which is basically effectively this. But the nice thing being integrated into the React ecosystem is you just write the same programming model. It's the same programming language um, where you have your component, whether it's running on the client or the server, and you can use that to call some function. That makes sense. And I think that's why a lot of us enjoy it. It's very easy uh, to use and to write a server action. But now my first question is, should I fetch data on a, for, on a server action? Should I use it as a replacement for, let's say, a GET request? Yeah, I think one of the biggest actual misconceptions with server actions is that there are only server actions. And the reality is that everything that you know about server actions actually applies to the client too. This is a new feature that's being released with React 19, which is in release candidate right now, but will be stable here shortly, that the same model of having the action prop, and you can send it some function, you can also do this in a client-side only React application in replacement of doing a on submit or on click. Now, the difference is this is running on the client and the versus on the server, the same programming model. It just makes it easy when you want to move between, you move to a server framework like an XJS, I can put that function either in line or in a different file and use the magic keyword use server that automatically generates that endpoint for me. Uh, and then I can consume it either in a server or a client component. Um, the second misconception that you brought up is, do I fetch data in these server actions? And the answer is no, but I can understand how folks fall into this because Naming is hard. It's one of the hardest parts of computer science. So when you see a use server, it kind of feels like I'm using the server to do some data fetching. The way I like to think about the, the wording is if you imagine you're on the client, you're reaching in and you're making a portal to the server to go talk to your API. Because when you're using a server framework like a Next.js or others that will build on top of server components and server actions, you already have this primitive that allows you to do data fetching on the server, and it's the server component. So the server component is where you're doing that initial fetching of data, which you can then forward to your client component that will run in the browser. Uh, the server action is for doing those mutations. So I add an item to my to-do list, or you know, I have some update um, action. Thank you for saying that because I got roasted in my YouTube comments, my last server actions video. So thank you for clearing that up. But <laughs> I think the reason why people are doing that is because it's just so easy. It's just so elegant. It's very clear. Yeah. I have an actions file or maybe I separate them and name them and export const async and it's there and I can call it. Yep. Right. But uh, I, I'm glad that you cleared that up. I so actually just building off that, your your intuition of why people want to use them for more than maybe what they're supposed to be used uh, is exactly right. It's because it feels easy. And I think there's actually another misconception there with why folks don't use server components for that data fetching. This only applies to, to server frameworks, and we can talk through just general React things here in a second. But I think a lot of people feel like if I make my component a server component, I just async on it and I await some data that feels, you know, conceptually about the same level of difficulty as making a server action. I have a function, yeah. I mark it async, I fetch some data. I think a lot of people think that that means they need to make their entire app server components. Or if they want to use anything that they are, you know, like use state, that somehow they're not able to take advantage of those things. And the great thing about server components in Next.js is the entry point into my page, I can have as a server component. I can mark it as async. I can go fetch some data from my database. And I can just forward that data 
to my client component. I don't have to do anything else inside of there. That's effectively what you were trying to do with the server action there. It's like you have this function, it's actually a component now that's going and fetching that data and basically sending it over to the browser to the client component. Um, and and I'm, I'm glad you brought up server components because again, this is um, the way I handle things where I've seen people use server actions to fetch data or to let's say even mutate data like you know with your database in a server component. And I did a video saying you kind of don't have to do that. You could just do it in the server component. And the reason I had that assumption is because I remember you had a video on the Vercel YouTube channel where you're like, there's no need to call an API route that's calling another API route when you can just call it directly in the server component. So is that the same thing where if I'm in a server component, why use a server action? I could just do whatever I want to do with my data there. Or is there... Um, a need potentially that I could use a server action in the server component. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, so you can think of the server component when you're fetching data as an async component. You're going and you're grabbing some data and you're awaiting it and then you're using it to display that data in the server component or to forward it to a client component. For server actions, you're usually doing this in response to something. You click on a button, you submit a form. That can be from within a server component or within a client component. The same model holds true. From a server component, you can define it in line if you want, or you can import it from another file. But in a client component, you have to import it. So you can't like pass it as a prop. For, yeah. And the reason for this is because the bundler is the tool that's able to look at your source code and understand, hey, there's this file that says you server at the top. When I'm doing the bundling from my application, okay, now I know to take this code, all these functions in that file, and go make all the APIs for it. If you're trying to pass it as a prop to a client component, you would effectively be trying to send that code from server to client, and that would be problematic because you want those APIs to stay on the server. Makes sense. I think uh, um, I'm starting to get how server components should be used in the grand scheme of things. Kind of how I think of them is I have them you know, on the high level where like maybe I'll fetch whatever data I need, and then in the server component, I'll have a client component that I pass the data through, and then whatever client activity I need to do, whatever button click I need to do, I do on the client. That's kind of how I, I, I've done things. So it sounds like server actions are best usually for any sort of mutations. And my favorite place to use them is in like on clicks and stuff like that. So I, I would assume that's the best place to use them, how to use them, and I shouldn't use them to fetch my data. Yeah, that's right. You can basically, anywhere you had an on click or an on submit, you can switch to using a, you know, the form on submit, you can change that to an action instead, call your server action, and you get a lot of nice benefits, both writing less code and also better progressive enhancement in your app, which is just a fancy way of saying that if the JavaScript hasn't loaded in the browser yet, and somebody code. tries to click, yeah. it's going to still work. Yeah, that's pretty fancy. I like that. Now, I, I, I think we're, I, I think everyone who's watching this will get a holistic picture of server actions because they're very, very popular. Um, like every video, if I have the title server action does numbers and the engagement and the comments are, are great. So uh, I'm glad we're clearing this up. Now, I did see you drop a video or a tweet where you mentioned a package called server only. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really get to look into it much, but like maybe in a very short form, like what is the difference between maybe server only and how is it different from you server? Because I know you server doesn't really mean what people think it means. So yeah, would like to know what server only means. Server only is basically, it's conceptually, it's more like a specification for bundlers, but practically what it means is, let's say I'm publishing a package or I'm just building a full stack app in a full stack React framework. If I mark a file with this import server only, I can ensure that the code that runs there will only ever run on the server. And if I try to do some fancy thing, like importing some of the code in that file to run in the browser, it will just automatically fail when I try to compile the app. So it's just an extra added layer of security for people who are really all bought into this new model. I see, and like, where do you, like, what is like a great example? When would I, when should I use, let's say, server only in my, you know, day-to-day -day development? Yeah, I think for most people, this is still pretty new because I would say for the majority of React developers, they are using an existing backend, an existing API. They're not building their entire app inside of a full stack React framework. So most of the time, they're still going and making a, uh, a call, a promise to some service, some database, some API. 
Um, so it doesn't happen as much there. When it starts to happen and where it starts to be more common is when you're building something we refer to as a data access layer. Just a fancy term for like centralizing all of the logic that is effectively the backend server logic Makes in sense. your full stack application. So inside of my next app, I have this data access layer that's talking to my database. It's setting up authorization and authentication, and it has all my checks and balances for who can you know, read some data, who can not read some data, uh, and so on and so forth. Well, that makes sense. Okay, I think, uh, I don't think that I have any other server action questions. Um, that clears up pretty much everything, a lot of misconceptions. And I think uh, the, the, the reason why these misconceptions occur is just because it's just so easy and it works. Right. So if I use mm -hmm. the server action to fetch data and it works and it's nice and I can name it however I want to name it, I think generally people have made that progression, but I'm glad we cleared that up. Is there any last thing you'd like to add regarding server actions? Yeah, I think the last thing I'd say is you can imagine a world where it might be possible in the future to async await a component on the client side as well. Mm -hmm. um, and in a world where that was possible, I think that would be more of the intuition where some of these folks yeah. were trying to to fetch data with an action in both environments, right? Because right now the server components async await that's only in the server, but yeah. it'd be great if that same model worked in the client. Um, that could be a future improvement to React. Well, okay, only time will tell, but uh, I guess for the server action stuff, uh, this makes sense.